This is our house in Strathuan and I just want to get a video record of how the sprinklers work to protect the outer cordon or the outer boundary and around our home. This is the dedicated diesel pump. It's an Aussie pump. It's got an 8 horsepower Kubota diesel engine. It's a turnkey electric start. It has its own sprinkler to keep it wet and humid and its water supply is in the ground and it's either 90,000 litres or 180,000 litres of water provided with all the architecture underground except the suction hoses and the delivery hose you see there everything else above ground is steel as I said the water is provided by the steel tanks Everything above ground is steel and here's one of the impact sprinklers. It's a pretty simple process to turn the delivery water on for the pump. The pump fails, the gravity is quite good to still uh, operate the impact sprinklers and the butterfly sprinklers. This is the western end of the house. Got a metal butterfly sprinkler protecting the barge boards and the peak of the house. And we've also got the other butterfly sprinkler which protects almost a curtain of water to uh, do the best it can to prevent the ember attack coming in under the eaves. From what I saw on a black Saturday the water hopefully uh, follows where the embers are going. That's the idea. This is the other end of the house, again, butterfly sprinklers horizontally and vertically to fill the gaps. There's an entire ring around the house which is pressurised by a gate valve to fill the system with water. At the rear of the house I've also put in some directional impact sprinklers to push it out into the the wooded areas at the rear of the home. We don't have much controlled space here but the house is set back into the hill and the gap between the veranda and the surrounding ground is uh, quite low and really from the experience here on Black Saturday there's really not much got in underneath the house here or under the eaves. Okay the process to get it going out of the front door, over the fence, up the hill to the tanks, turn the water supply on. Here yeah, I can see the table and the kids, guinea pig house is there but that'll be out of the way. Come back down the hill once you've turned the water supply on, you come to the pump. Start the pump, pretty simple, glow plug, I'll try and do this one handed. Once the pump's going, you open the water supply for the outer cordon. Now that's with a pump at idle. So that's with the pump at idle and the water is interlocking and self-supporting each other. It certainly does put a lot of water out once you turn the pump up. The pump really doesn't need to be going that hard at all. We will uh, certainly run out of fuel in the pump before we run out of water. The duration or the endurance of the pump is approximately two hours. last part of the process is to come down and turn on the water supply for the ring of sprinklers 
for the house itself. I don't mind too much that this is at the other end of the house because it ensures that I have one last look prior to going inside. I mean, that has its advantages and disadvantages, but the way the water was articulated here prior to us taking possession of the house, this is the best I could do with. I also have a spare 40 mil outlet here if I need to bring the the other pump to uh, tackle any other spot fires. Here we go. Again, this is just the pump at idle. And that is the end of what I wanted to capture today. So in summary, steel tanks, all the architecture underground, the only thing out of the ground is the suction for the diesel pump. Primarily, we're relying on the tanks, however there's a dam back up for water. We'll run out of fuel before we run out of water.